Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be checking out the 2014 Ford Escape. This is a four-door compact SUV with seating for five. And this particular trim is the 1.6 liter EcoBoost SE front wheel drive. This is the lightest of the trim at just about 3,500 pounds. It also includes fog lights. Now one aerodynamic feature that's pretty cool that'll probably go unnoticed uh, is these vents in front of the radiator. So when you're at speed uh, and actually have plenty of cooling, these can close and it'll give you better aerodynamics as the air isn't passing through as much. This will reduce the drag of the vehicle and provide better fuel economy. There's also this air inlet up front at the lower portion of the bumper. Now that air duct up front brings cool air back behind the engine where the turbo and the exhaust are probably to help cool that area. As tested, this vehicle's MSRP is 29470 including delivery. One of the exterior features I do like is this pad here to unlock the vehicle, which illuminates, but it's basically hidden when you're not using it. This also features a power lift gate. Lots of rear cargo space, and the rear seats do fold down. The vehicle also holds the cover for the spare tire so you can pull it out. Uh, a lot of these, uh, it seems like they just put on something cheap and allow it to fall down. So it's kind of nice that they do have a place where you can hold it and access the tools and spare tire. So let's take a look under the hood. Now one of the first things you'll notice is uh, everything for the most part is pretty much covered uh, and things are a bit cramped. Um, but you do have access to some of the major ones. So you've got your windshield washer fluid here, you've got your oil access here, your dipstick is there as well, and here we have the brake uh, reservoir. Now your battery is tucked in back here. Now I like seeing the battery back close to the driver because you're keeping the weight uh, towards the center of the vehicle, but uh, the problem with this is that the battery is so far back that it's underneath this cover and if you were to need to change the battery you're gonna to have to remove this entire assembly uh, otherwise maybe remove this air filter box in order to get this out so from a serviceability perspective it's not very ideal uh, just based on the location of where this battery is Also with the coolant reservoir, the uh, fill cap is tucked in underneath in here. So I think it would have made you know, a little more sense if the fill cap was right here and then it'd be a little bit easier to access uh, based on where it is now where you've got this panel kind of in the way blocking it. So as previously mentioned, this is the 1.6 liter EcoBoost engine. So what is EcoBoost? Now the biggest thing about EcoBoost just means that it's turbocharged and the benefit of this is you can use a smaller engine. So what they do is they have a small engine, in this case a 1.6 liter, uh, and they turbocharge it so that it can create the power of a, a much larger engine without necessarily the size. And the benefit of this is when you don't need that power your engine's much smaller and is consuming much less fuel. So let's follow the path of the air. So here we have our air filter uh, pulling in air from up front. That air is then going to move back uh, behind the vehicle where it's going to go into the inlet of the turbocharger. We can pull off this cover here. That air continues after the turbocharger, comes up to the throttle body, which we have right here, and then into the intake manifold. Now some interesting things to note, uh, both the intake manifold and surprisingly the valve cover, uh, both a uh, composite plastic. So, you know, you can save weight by doing this uh, and if they can get away with it, then I think that's pretty cool. Um, you know, you're obviously gonna save cost as well by using a plastic rather than an aluminum. The engine block and the engine head, however, are both aluminum. Now the aluminum block and heads, of course, saving weight uh, as opposed to an iron. Uh, and also this has a compression ratio of 10.1 to one. It also features gasoline direct injection, uh, and the cool thing about this is, although it has a high compression ratio and it's turbocharged, Ford recommends 87 octane, so the lower octane, so you can use cheaper fuel uh, and still get the efficiency benefits of a high compression ratio. And a lot of that is likely due to the fact that it's direct injection, so you can time uh, the fuel injection better uh, and not have the consequences of knock with lower octane fuels. This engine makes 178 horsepower at 5,700 RPM and 184 pound-feet of torque at 2,500 RPM. The power on this trim sent to a six-speed automatic transmission, which then sends the power to the two front wheels. 
These are 17 inch aluminum wheels wrapped in Continental 235 over 55 tires. Same wheels and tires in the back. Up front, 11.8 inch ventilated disc brakes and a McPherson strut suspension. Here we have the steering link, the anti roll bar behind it, which is connecting here. And finally, we have the drive axle. You can see the CV joints. 11 inch solid discs in the rear. Separate spring and shock multi link suspension. Now, by placing the spring separate, they're able to move the shock closer to the body and not have that spring intrude on the trunk space. So, we've got a trailing arm link here, we've got a link here, and an upper link here to restrict it to vertical movement. Uh, and then you can see the stabilizer bar with the connection right here. So let's take a look at the interior. Automatic lights, fog lights, power mirrors, and power windows. So in the interior, uh, one of the first things you'll notice is that the forward visibility is fantastic. It's really good and I think that may be part of the reason why that engine uh, compartment seems so squished is that they were going for forward visibility on making a little bit of a sacrifice in order to have excellent forward visibility. Uh, out the rear, not quite as good, but there is a uh, backup camera. so. You know, it's not that big of a deal um, as far as rear visibility. You've got that backup camera. Uh, navigation system, the steering wheel. Uh, there's a lot going on with the steering wheel. There's kind of different sections going on. So up at the top, you know, there's some finger divots uh, to hold to have a good grip. Uh, 10 and 2, you know, you've got these little pads here. Uh, the steering wheel is a bit hard, but uh, one thing I do really like is that they have an opening at the bottom. You know, not many vehicles are still doing this, uh, and I really like having that uh, just for kind of cruising along on long trips. It's nice to just kind of rest your hand on that bottom of the steering wheel. Uh, plenty of leg room. I'm about 6'1", 6'2", and I've got plenty of space in here. The front seat, very comfortable, and it's got 10-way adjustment, so you can get it uh, in a position, you know, that, that works out for you pretty well, even if you're pretty tall, like myself. Um, here we have the gear selector. Uh, one thing with this is when it is in park, you know, it's kind of blocking uh, this AC system, but, you know, that's not that big of a deal. Uh, once you're in drive, it is pretty much out of the way for the most part. It is a little close, but um, you know, it is somewhat out of the way. Uh, one thing I do like about this AC system, instead of the traditional, you know, knob to select the different things, it's basically an on-off for the top, you know, on-off for your feet, and on-off for defrost. And I think that's a much easier, much more intuitive, and very simple way of doing it. I like the way they've done that. Another point on the visibility is this mirror is not uh, at eye level, and I really like that. A lot of cars now are putting the mirrors at eye level, so when you look to the right, and you know if something's out in this direction, then you've got this mirror blocking it, whereas here, it's up high, you know, and it's you can just glance up at it, see what's out the back, but it doesn't obstruct your view, so I like the way that they've done that. Also, on the mirrors on right and left, they have blind spot checks, uh, and they actually work really well. You see the top left corner of the mirror there. So I was actually testing that on the road, um, and I had a car in the main mirror, uh, then as it came closer, I saw it in the blind spot, and then as it exited the blind spot, I saw it driving along. So if you set them up right, they actually work really well, and you can basically eliminate your blind spot. So overall, I just want to say that the visibility of this car is excellent. You can see through your blind spots, you can see great out the front, and you've got the uh, reverse camera for the rear. Sitting in the rear, I have the front seat adjusted to where I would be sitting in the front. Once again, I'm about 6'1", 6 6'2". 6 uh, so I do have leg room back here, uh, and it, it kind of cuts out of the chair so that you've got a little bit more space. So a uh, decent amount of leg room in the rear. Uh, you've also got AC uh, back here, so individual control for you uh, for the rear two seats. And there's also a 110 volt, 150 watt uh, regular three port outlet. You also have a center armrest that folds down with cup holders. Now you've got a touchscreen up front uh, as far as for navigation, uh, for your climate control. Uh, you can go into, you can hook up your phone. So you can, you know, call whoever you want to call or play music from your phone. 
Um, another button that I like is it has a sound button, so you can go directly into the equalizer uh, and adjust that. So it's nice having that. A lot of them are kind of buried in systems and hard to find, so they make it pretty easy for you right there. So let's go to navigation, and then you can use that uh, for wherever you need to get. All right, let's take it for a test drive. So a couple of the questions that I'll need to answer with this is, uh, is the 1.6 liter enough? Does it give you enough power? Uh, and does it save you in fuel economy? So I'm gonna be doing a couple of different things to, to try and figure that out. Um, first off, we're just gonna take it on a little windy road and see how it handles. Now, when I first started driving it, I thought the brakes were a little touchy, uh, not much give before you know, you're really starting to hammer down on the brakes, but uh, you get used to it and you adjust and you know now it doesn't feel quite as bad. Um, on the power note, I think uh, as is, you know, if it's just, especially if it's just you driving in the car or, you know, one or two other people, it definitely has plenty of power, you know, it's not lacking there. Uh, where you may run into a problem is if you're towing something. So I believe the tow capacity of this is 2,000 pounds. Uh, and <clears throat> if you do know for a fact that, you know, you're going to be pulling a jet ski or something around, you may want to opt for the two liter engine. Uh, it may give you a little bit more oomph get you going a little bit more, um, especially, you know, merging onto a highway, something like that, where you really want to have some power. But this one doesn't feel lacking at all. Um, it feels actually pretty good. It's a 3,500 pound car, and when you put your foot down, it goes. actually hear quite a bit of the turbo uh, it's pretty quiet but you can definitely hear it especially at lower speeds uh, if, if you push down on the gas very much and you let off you can hear a light you know where it's uh, letting out that extra pressure Let's see if I can replicate it maybe you can hear it a little bit there um, which is kind of cool you know you can kind of hear it a little bit but nothing too dramatic You know, obviously no one's ever going to be driving an SUV on windy roads all crazy, but uh, it does seem to handle pretty well. Now, you may notice a little bit of torque steer when you press the accelerator pedal down all the way. This is something that can happen with front wheel drive cars which have a decent amount of power. And what will happen is the steering wheel will kind of try and turn itself when you press down on the throttle. Now, it doesn't happen every time I press down the gas, but when it does, uh, it can be a little bit unsettling. Now, if you hold the steering wheel fairly firmly while you're accelerating, you shouldn't notice this too much. You can also switch to uh, manual shifting, and it's kind of as expected. You know, um, automatic transmissions with these manual selectors, it's really just if you're going down a hill, you know, and you want to select which gear you're in for some engine braking, something like that, because you're not going to get the response uh, that you want, you know, out of like a DCT or something like that. But it works. So driving on the highway, um, doing about 65, 70 miles an hour, uh, the noise actually isn't too bad. So quite a bit of it isolated out from the cabin. You know, you don't hear the tires all that much. So you could hold, you know, a normal conversation in here, or you know, listen to music and not have too much uh, distortion from the road that you're driving on. And this particular road, honestly, isn't very good in the first place. So it's kind of a testament that you know the the ride quality isn't all that bad. The noise is pretty low. Um, and yeah, you know, overall pretty good. So I've done my fuel economy run. Uh, we're looking at 33.5 miles per gallon. That's after 53 miles. Uh, the route that I take is a combination of city and highway, mostly highway, uh, and I don't really exceed anything over 70 miles an hour. Drive pretty non-aggressively. But for a compact SUV, 33.5 is excellent uh, fuel economy. So that 1.6 liter turbo actually doing a pretty good job of maintaining good fuel economy as well as, you know, the aerodynamics of the vehicle uh, and how lightweight it is uh, relative to its size. So overall impressions, um, for the most part, I like it. There's some things I would change. I think a little bit of the serviceability under the hood could be improved. Uh, and I think the gas pedal and the brake pedal feel, you know, they're a little touchy, both of them a little bit uh, sensitive. You know, you downshift fairly easily and you brake pretty hard fairly easily. 
Uh, so maybe just a, a little bit better feedback there. But overall, uh, the biggest thing and the greatest thing about this vehicle definitely is the visibility. The visibility is fantastic. Out the front, uh, you've got your blind spot mirrors, you've got a rear backup camera. Visibility in this car is fantastic. Uh, and, and that's something I really like to see, uh, you know, not sacrificing visibility. I think there's a lot of cars out there that do it uh, for other reasons. And I think it's pretty good uh, the way they've designed this. Um, visibility out the front is just fantastic. I do think the 1.6 has enough power for the average user and for the gas mileage that it gets, uh, it's a pretty incredible engine. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.